Hello guys and welcome back. This is part two of a series of videos about the echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis. Before starting, make sure to watch part one first. Thank you for all the support and don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start. To continue with the aortic stenosis assessment, now let's talk about the essential parameters in the echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis severity. The first parameters are the aortic valve maximal velocity and mean gradient. Maximal aortic valve velocity and mean gradient are both obtained using continuous wave Doppler interrogation of the aortic valve. The major challenge with continuous wave Doppler is ensuring that the angle of insonation is fully aligned with the direction of the aortic stenosis jet. A difference in alignment of more than 15 to 20 degrees between the ultrasound beam and the direction of the blood flow will result in significant underestimation of Doppler indices and the severity of aortic stenosis. Now, what are some key points when measuring these parameters? First, the aortic valve maximal velocity and mean gradient should be obtained in all patients undergoing the assessment of aortic valve stenosis. Second, the standalone probe or PDOF probe should be used in all patients from multiple acoustic windows. And third, the aortic valve maximal velocity and mean gradient should be combined with the aortic valve area in order to describe aortic stenosis severity. To obtain the aortic valve gradients, we use the simplified Bernoulli equation. The simplified Bernoulli equation is a formula by which the maximal velocity across an aortic valve can be converted to an equivalent pressure change. Here you can see the formula where V2 is the velocity of blood flow across the obstruction and V1 is the velocity of blood flow prior to the level of obstruction. In most patients, V1 is relatively small, so the formula can be simplified further. The next essential parameter in the echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis severity is aortic valve area. The assessment of aortic valve area is well validated using echocardiography and is an essential aspect of the comprehensive echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis. The continuity equation is used to estimate the aortic valve area. Now let's name some key points when measuring the aortic valve area. First, the effective aortic valve area calculated using the continuity equation should be obtained in all patients undergoing assessment of aortic stenosis. Second, the aortic valve area should be combined with the aortic valve maximal velocity and mean gradient in order to describe aortic stenosis severity. And third, the left ventricular outflow tract's diameter should be measured at the insertion point of the aortic cusps and not below. In order to obtain the aortic valve area, we need to apply the continuity equation. The continuity equation dictates that the volume of blood flowing through the LVOT must be the same as the volume of blood flowing through the aortic valve. We can calculate stroke volume in any conduit as the product of the velocity time integral and the cross-sectional area of the conduit. 
and using these two principles we can derive the following formula. Now let's talk about some of the common errors in assessment of aortic stenosis. First, failure to use speed of probe from multiple acoustic windows including apex and right intercostal space. Second, inaccurate assessment of the left ventricular outflow tract diameter and cross-sectional area. Third, poor positioning of pulse wave and continuous wave sample volume. And fourth, failure to image the ascending aorta and arch. This picture is very useful and important. This is a decision aid that you can use in your daily practice to guide yourself in the assessment of aortic stenosis. We already talked about essential parameters, but also we can use additional parameters in the assessment of aortic valve stenosis. The first additional parameter is the indexed aortic valve area. The indexed aortic valve area is not required in all patients, and an index aortic valve area less than 0.6 cm2 per meter square is consistent with severe aortic stenosis. Now, the use of index aortic valve area should usually only be employed in individuals of small body habitus and should be avoided in patients who are overweight where the index aortic valve area will overestimate the aortic stenosis severity. Another additional parameter in the assessment of aortic valve stenosis is the dimensionless index. The dimensionless index is obtained from the ratio of the left ventricular outflow tract and aortic valve velocities. A value of less than 0.25 is consistent with severe aortic stenosis. The dimensionless index is useful when the image quality prevents accurate assessment of the LVOT cross-sectional area and if the LVOT cannot be measured accurately, the dimensionless index may be used for serial studies to monitor progression of aortic stenosis. The next additional parameter in the assessment of aortic valve stenosis is the planimetry. The BSE does not recommend routine use of planimetry and if planimetry is to be pursued, the transesophageal echocardiogram is the echocardiographic modality of choice. Flow contraction means that planimetry always underestimates aortic stenosis severity, even if performed accurately. And planimetry is not reliable in low flow states as there is insufficient opening of the valve. Other considerations in the assessment of aortic stenosis are atrial fibrillation and blood pressure. In patients with atrial fibrillation, average values from 5 to 10 consecutive beats are required to ensure accurate assessment of aortic stenosis severity. And hypertension may lead to either over or underestimation of aortic stenosis severity. So, aortic stenosis should be reevaluated after adequate control of blood pressure, with a systolic blood pressure target of 130 to 140 millimeters of mercury. 
When evaluating aortic stenosis, it's important to take into consideration these additional prognostic markers. The first additional prognostic marker is the left ventricular ejection fraction. Left ventricular ejection fraction should be assessed in all patients with aortic stenosis using quantitative methodology if possible. It's very important to know that patients with severe aortic stenosis and an ejection fraction less than 55% should be reported as impaired in the clinical report. And also, patients with severe aortic stenosis and an ejection fraction less than 35% should be reported as severely impaired LV with high likelihood of improvement after aortic valve intervention. Another additional prognostic marker is the index left ventricular mass. Part of the adaptive mechanism of the left ventricle to an increased afterload is compensatory hypertrophy. Index left ventricular mass should be reported for all patients with severe aortic stenosis. Here you can see the abnormal values for males and females. The third additional prognostic marker is the global longitudinal strain. Global longitudinal strain derived using speckle tracking is a surrogate for the burden of left ventricular fibrosis and may allow the identification of early left ventricular dysfunction. Global longitudinal strain may identify patients who are at an increased risk of cardiovascular events. And the last additional prognostic marker is pulmonary hypertension. The ECHO report should include an assessment of the probability of pulmonary hypertension. A high likelihood of pulmonary hypertension should be highlighted to the referring clinician and higher values of pulmonary artery systolic pressures are associated with poorer long-term survival. Thank you for watching. My next video is going to be part 3 of the echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis. So don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. Bye!